so i'm just sharing my screen with you the content which i just wanted to discuss with you so i suppose that you are able to see the screen and the content which i have just shared with you so uh, guys in the previous session uh, what we had discussed i am just taking the name of uh, the content that we have discussed we had discussed in the previous session that was the commerce trade aids to trade activity we did and then uh, the organization then entrepreneur and entrepreneurial skills so uh, even the forms of organization had been discussed over there now guys uh, this is the topic that we just want to discuss with you uh, this is uh, the partnership form of organization so uh, we had discussed about the sole tradership in the previous session so uh, there were problems in uh, running the business while the one person is in charge and he is taking care of all the activities which are being done in the organization so therefore uh, this partnership concept uh, had come came into being so uh, what we had learned in the previous section so you have learned that the sole trader organizations have a limited financial resources limited managerial ability and skills and unlimited liability means in uh, what is in unlimited liability means in case of uh, if there is a profit so that is very well because he is the whole soul in charge of the profit but what happens while in case of loss so he will be the whole and soul uh, bearer of that loss and therefore it is called unlimited liability means even if uh, even when uh, there is a loss so his personal property will also be seized to pay off the business liability so therefore uh, it is called uh, uh, yes excuse me sir mm -hmm. uh, yeah um, uh, can uh, one any one learner be the co-host of the meeting because sometimes uh, when the teacher is teaching uh, it's difficult for him to admit the learners so anyone mm -hmm. uh, among you please raise your hand i will make uh, him or her the co-host so that uh, Okay, uh, Muskar. Okay, can I make you? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, the, the your responsibility will be to admit the learners. You know how to admit? Yes, sir. I okay, know. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I'm making you uh, as one of the co-host. Uh, sir, may I say something? Yep. Uh, what What do you want to say? Uh, sir, do you have any problem that this call being an open call? Uh, I can't. Uh, I couldn't get you. Means, uh, what do you want to say? Open call open means. Open call means means anyone can join without asking. Okay, okay. Uh, it is a open call, but uh, anyway, admit uh, the the. Okay, let me check. Let me check if that. Okay, option... so go to the three dots. You will have the op option of host controls. Host control, yeah, I'm just going there. Host and you control. will have the open option. Click on that and anyone can join without asking. Okay, okay, yes, um, I'm just checking. Anyone, anyone with the link can... One minute, one minute, one minute. Okay, so if you have difficulty, make me host, I will do that. Yeah, yeah, I have made you host, and uh, yeah, okay, you can do it, then please do it. Mm, yes. Yes, sir, you can go ahead with your lecture. I, I have made uh, Muska the uh, co-host of the meeting. And uh, yeah, please allow. Okay, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, so guys, uh, I was just discussing about the unlimited liability of uh, a sole tradership 
while a whole uh, a single person is in charge of a business organization or a business concern so uh, he'll be having an unlimited liability so because of the unlimited liability it is one of the constraint or the hurdles or you can say the disadvantage major disadvantage so therefore uh, this the, the the scenario of partnership firm or you can say partnership form of organization came into being so in case of expansion more capital more managerial skills are required uh, at the same time the risk will also increase a sole proprietor may not be able to fulfill all these requirements because um, means if the business is being expanded so we have uh, core skills to manage all different departments so one single person cannot manage a person who lacks managerial skills may be having capital another person who is a good manager may not be having sufficient capital so guys such kind of constraints are there because uh, each and every person does not have every quality or versatile person cannot be found means it is virtually possible to get a uh, versatile person so therefore we require more than one person to handle all these activities so this calls for a situation where two or more persons come together pool their business capital and skills and organize the business so uh, guys this type of uh, business organization is called partnership organization it grew essentially because of the limitations or you can say the failure of sole proprietorship so uh, now we uh, need to go through some of the definitions which are given in your uh, text uh, in the booklet as defined by jl hansen a partnership is a form of business organization in which two or more persons up to a maximum of 20 join together to undertake some form of business activity a partnership form a partnership is a form of business organization in which two or more persons and up to maximum 20 persons so how uh, we have decided this is the limit of 20 persons so because because of the act of indian partnership act 1932 so it defined partnership as a relation between persons who have agreed to share the profits of business carried on by all or any of them acting for all. The Uniform Partnership Act of the USA defines a partnership as an association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of the business for profit so guys these these definitions are uh, very important to be considered so while we are uh, having just creating a concept in your in our mind what is partnership so the persons who own the partnership business are individually called partners and collectively known as the firm or partnership firm on an agreed basis partners contribute to capital and share the responsibility of running the business however in some cases one partner may provide the whole or major portion of the capital and others contribute technical and managerial skills so it depends upon person to person uh, with or without some capital all such terms 
and conditions of partnership are usually mentioned in the partnership agreement so guys uh, here important to note so this if while you are uh, going into uh, a partnership firm or partnership form of organization you need to have this partnership agreement otherwise without agreement you will have to face uh, the consequences if you do not have partnership agreement now uh, let us discuss about the main features of the partnership firm the first one is plurality of person plural the in sole proprietorship we have singular means sole person single person here you have multiple persons so multiple persons means multiple hands multiple minds multiple capital multiple skills so therefore uh, this is one of the major uh, feature or the advantage of having a partnership form of organization then guys uh, as i have just uh, told you that if you are into a partnership form you need to prepare a written agreement so contractual relationship is there among the partner partnership is created by an agreement between persons called partners in other words a person can become a partner only on the basis of a contract so guys this contract could be oral written or implied so it is up to you while you are going into a partnership form of organization or you are you want to run your partnership firm so uh, the contract may be oral written or implied but written is preferable then guys this is the third important uh, advantage of partnership firm or the feature that is profit sharing so if you are into a partnership firm you need to share your profit whatever the profit is at the end of the year you need to share among your partner in the predetermined ratio then existence of business should be there so this is also one of the important aspect so partnership firm cannot be um, created just to perform only one transaction you need to have the continuity of the work or the business so it is also one of the important aspect or the feature the purpose of the agreement among the partners is to do some lawful business and share profits if the purpose is something other than business it should not be treated as partnership for example if the purpose is to carry some charitable work it will, will not be treated as partnership because there is no business it is just a kind of philanthropic activity it runs only on the donation then principal agent relationship should be there the business of the firm may be carried on by all or one or more partners acting for all the partners every partners is entitled to take part in the operations of the firm in dealing with other parties each partner is entitled to present the firm and other partners in respect of the business of the firm so guys do you have any doubt till here if you are having any doubt okay 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 i got
so principal and agent relationship should be there while you are into a partnership firm then guys here also this is the important feature uh, which we had in the sole proprietorship as well so there is an unlimited liability means unlimited liability was there in sole proprietorship also and even in partnership firm we have unlimited liability so what is the meaning of unlimited liability i am just repeating means in case of loss even the par means even uh, the personal property of the partners will be ceased to pay off the business obligation this is called unlimited liability so what is the difference between the unlimited liability in the sole proprietorship and in the partnership firm that you need to understand here you have more than 1% to distribute the liability but in sole proprietorship we had only 1% to bear all the liability here you can at least distribute among the partners so this is the only difference otherwise the same uh, drawback is there <laughs> then good faith because partnership uh, is based on the good faith and honesty then restriction on transfer of share this is also important feature means uh, a partner by his own he cannot transfer his share he need to take the concern of the other partner then this partnership will be dissolved then new partnership will form will be formed in case of any transfer of share now uh, guys you need to understand about uh, in the partnership firm the classification of partners so partners how many types of partners are there we have based on extent of participation we have active partners sleeping partner based on sharing of profit we have nominal partner and partner in profit based on liability we have limited partner journal partner based on nature of behavior we have partner by estoppel and partner by holding so means we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight different kind of partners now uh, one by one we will discuss because if you really um, want to understand about the partnership firm we need to understand about the partners so uh, based on the extent of partner participation uh, we have active and sleeping so what is active partner guys if a partner takes an active part in the management of the business we call him as active partner as the name suggests he is actively participating in the business activities he is also known as working partner alternatively we can use such name and in the opposite case what is sleeping partner as the name suggests he is sleeping means whatever the activity is going on in the business he is not he is least bothered about this bothered but least bothered if a person is not actively associated with the working of the partnership firm we call him as sleeping partner so guys, a sleeping business partner simply invest his capital. He does not participate in the functioning of the firm. Such a partner is also known as a dormant partner. So dormant means also inactive. It is also called inactive. Now guys, sharing of profit, if uh, you uh, take the base, so that is nominal partner and partner in profit. So a nominal means for the namesake. A partner who just lends his name to the partnership is known as 
nominal partner means he is not contributing his anything but just he is lending his name only because because of the name and brand name the partnership firm can run you you will accept this thing that if very key very important person or key person is there in your business your business will run by its own so therefore such kind of partners can be hired or can be considered as a nominal partner you you are just using his name not capital not skills only name so he either invest his capital no he neither invest his capital nor participates in day to day working and management of the firm such partners are not entitled to sh uh, a share of profit but they are liable to other parties for all the acts of the firm so this is the important point to be noted i suppose that this point is clear to you guys now we have partner in profit so again as the name suggest a partner who shares the profits of the business without being liable for losses is called a partner in profit means he is only uh, enjoying the profit or part in profit if in case there is loss he is not going to share this loss so as a rule he will not take any part in management of the business this is applicable to a minor who is admitted to the benefit of the firm so based on the behavior and conduct exhibited a partner may be divided into partner by estoppel so again again uh, another basis there partner by estoppel and partner by holding out again new terminology guys so that you need to understand as the name suggest partner by estoppel a partner who behaves in the public in such a fashion as to give an impression that he is one of the partners in a partnership firm is called a partner by estoppel such partners are not entitled to profit but are fully liable as regards to the firm's obligation so guys this is very important thing means although you have not made him a partner but in public he is acting like that he is a partner and in case of a, uh, any loss he will be the sufferer or the obligation but you will not give him the profit you will not give him the share in profit now guys we have uh, this partners by holding out if a particular partner of a firm represents that 
another person is also a partner of the firm and if such person does not disclaim the partnership relationship even after coming to know about it such person is called a partner by holding out such partners are not entitled to profit but are liable to liable as regards to obligation of the firm so here also uh, the same thing uh, partner by estoppel and partner by holding out but the only difference what is the difference Here the person himself is showing that he is a partner. But here, if a particular partner of the firm represents that another person is also a partner of the firm. And if such person does not disclaim the partnership relationship, even after coming to know about it, means here you will have to prove that we declared him as partner and he was knowing all these things but even after knowing the things he had not disclaimed that he is not a partner of the firm so in that case he will be the sufferer of the loss but you will not share the profit to him so this is the legality under which you need to go through because uh, there is if there is only one person there will not be any dispute but if there is more than one person no doubt you will be having different skills versatility in your business multiple capital but the disputes as well so therefore while you are uh, going uh, such kind of form of organization that is partnership you need to make it very clear or you need to have a written agreement then guys we have uh, based on liability also partners may be classified into uh, two category that is limited partner and another one is journal partner So guys, uh, if you are into a limited partner, so as the name suggests, limited partner liability means he is having liability, but limited liability. The liability of such partner is limited to the extent of the capital contributed by him. He is not entitled to take part in the management of the business. But he can advise the other journal members his acts uh, do not bind the firm. He has right to inspect the books of the firm for his information. Such partners are also called special partners. But in journal partner, as the name suggests, means he is journal. Journal means normal partner. He is also called unlimited partner. His liability is unlimited and he is entitled to participate in the management of the firm or the business. Every partner who is not limited partner is treated as a journal partner. So guys, now after understanding about the uh, types of partner now we have uh, this partnership deed as uh, since very beginning i am telling you that if you are 
into a partnership firm, you need to have a written agreement. So what are the contents uh, which you must include in your partnership deed or agreement? So uh, these are the points. You know that a partnership is formed by an agreement. Such agreement may be either written or oral. And guys, to avoid misunderstanding and unnecessary litigations, it is always desirable to have a written agreement. When the written agreement is duly stamped and you need to get it registered as well, so it is known as partnership deed. Means written agreement, duly stamped, signed by all the partners and get it registered through the registrar office. So that is a partnership deed. Guys, after registration, each partner is given a copy of the partnership deed. A partnership deed generally contains the following particulars. So guys, these are the important points that uh, a partnership deed should contain. Name of the firm, nature of the business to be carried out, name of the partners, the town and the place where business will be carried on, the amount of capital to be contributed by each partner, the amount and loss sharing ratio of each partner, loans and advances by the partners and the interest payable on them, the amount of drawings by partner, each partner a drawing means the amount which is taken out by the partners for his personal use. This is called drawings by each partner and the rate of interest allowed thereon means if a particular partner is taking out money from the common money common pool of money so the partner needs to pay interest on it so what would be the interest so that we need to mention the rate of interest on capital means the capital which the different partners have contributed towards the partnership firm means if there is any scope of giving them interest that needs to be mentioned over there then duties, powers, and obligations of the business partners, a remuneration, if any, payable to the active partner, because there are different category of partners. So it needs to be decided because if one person is doing nothing and another person is very active and he is doing so many things in the business. So therefore, uh, in addition to the share in profit, you need to decide what would be the remuneration if one is doing extra work in the partnership firm then maintenance of the accounts and arrangement of audit so your business needs to be audited then settlement in case of dissolution of the partnership firm the methods of evaluation of goodwill on admission or death of the retirement of partner so guys this is also important thing means goodwill what is goodwill so goodwill is a kind of uh, image or the reputation of the business and if you are running your business for the last five years now after five years you require that one more person should be admitted in your business so this new entrant person as a partner will have to pay something as in the name of goodwill and this goodwill will be distributed among all the old partners of the firm so how you are going to calculate the goodwill so the method of goodwill so there are uh, different methods of calculating goodwill so that need to be mentioned in the partnership agreement so means uh, in a nutshell we can say uh, if there is anything which is important that needs to be mentioned in the partnership deed because if anything is written there will be will, will not be any dispute if there is anything which is not written 
so there may means such kind of thing may be one of the cause of dispute so the method of revaluation of assets and liability on admission or death of retirement of partner the method of retirement of partner and the arrangement for the payment of the dues of a, a retired or deceased partner arbitration in case of disputes among partners then arrangements in case of partner becomes insolvent so uh, as the uh, here here it is mentioned that this is not an exhaustive list guys we can mention so many other things as well any other clauses as desired by the part could be included in the partner uh, partnership deed in the partnership deed so this is important and your business should be registered now uh, this is the thing i'll uh, capture only the headings because here we are going to discuss about the merits and limitations of the partnership firm so guys easy formation means very easy because uh, two or more person can create partnership common agreement they can prepare then get it registered very easy formation more capital available because there is more than one person capital is more more diverse skills and expertise because there is more than one than more than one person you will have diverse skills flexibility is there then secrecy also because uh, there are only few partners over there and they can maintain secrecy keen interest because that is their firm they will have to take participate then protection is over there due to the role of unanimity in fundamental matters the rights of all partners are fully protected check and control over careless decisions diffusion of risk so these are the advantages and it is also guys not uh, without disadvantage or limitation so limited capital is there because there are other forms of organization also where we can arrange more than more capital over there because here you have a limiting uh, of 20 partners over there under indian partnership act then unlimited liability is there no public confidence is there because partners they can do their business by their own because of the secrecy then this is also one of the limitation that no transferability of interest you cannot uh, transfer your interest uh, to someone else by your own you need to have the consent of other partners uncertainty conflict among partner dispute then a uh, risk of implied authority that is uh, since each partner acts as an agent of the firm act of one partner would bind the firm and all the remaining partners a dishonest or incompetent partner may lend the firm into difficulties and the other partners may have to pay for it <clears throat> so this is the implied authority means each and every person is king of the business so therefore their act may bring the firm into a problem so guys this is all about the partnership firm before starting the new form of organization uh, if you have any question you can ask <clears throat>
<clears throat> now guys we have joint hindu family firm so what is that the joint hindu family that is uh, firm is a unique form of business organization prevailing only in india this is the firm belonging to hindu joint hindu family and governed by the provisions of the hindu law so guys hindu law again we have two different schools so therefore two different kind of hindu undivided family joint hindu family so one is mitakshra and another one is daya bhaga so guys uh, mitakshra it is applicable to whole of india except bengal and assam so the daya bhaga is in bengal and assam so this is hindu undivided family so what is the difference between two different schools that we need to understand according to this school a hindu inherits property from his father grandfather and great grandfather thus three successive generations in the male line son grandson and great grandson inherits the ancestral property they are called co-partners so in the partnership we have partners here we have co-partners and the senior most member of the family is called karta karta of the family means head of the family the hindu succession act 1956 has extended the line of co-partnership interest to female relatives of the deceased co-partner or male relative claiming through such female relatives so guys whereas in daya bhaga according to this uh, the male heirs become members only so this is the uh, difference between the two important feature of joint hindu family that you need to understand because only in this case you will be having uh, the activity participation most important features of the joint hindu family firm are business is managed by the senior member of the family called karta other members do not have the right to participate in the management of the firm other members cannot question the authority of the karta means head of the family their only remedy is to get the family dissolved by mutual agreement karta has the power to borrow funds for the business the liability of the karta is unlimited whereas the other co partners are liable only to the extent of their share in the business if the karta has misappropriated the funds of the business he has to compensate the other co partners to the extent of their share in the hindu uh, the joint hindu property the debt of any member of the family does not dissolve the business or the family through mutual agreement the joint hindu family firm can be dissolved so guys these are the features now we have this activity so fill in the blanks the maximum number of partner in the partnership firm doing banking business is 10 good the liability of the partners in a partnership firm is 
Unlimited. Very good, very good. I am taking one true and false also. The partnership agreement must be in writing. Is it true or false? True. It is false because in it is up to you. It can be oral, it can be implied. But if it is written, it is good. Written is preferable. Now, guys, this is the most preferable form of organization. Means it does not have the limitation of sole proprietorship, does not have the limitation of partnership, even the joint Hindu family. So it is the most popular all over the world. This is company form of organization. So guys, you have learned that sole proprietorship and partnership have the disadvantages of limited resources, unlimited liability, limited managerial skills, etc. The life and stability of these organizations also depend on the life and stability of the part, proprietor, proprietor means owner or partners. Hence, they are not considered suitable for large scale business. For large scale business, you require large investment and specialized managerial skills. The element of risk is also very high. This situation led to the emergence of company form of business organization. In case of joint stock company, capital is contributed by not one or two persons, but by a number of persons called shareholders. So guys, uh, this is the you can say corporation, the company. So here you can create shareholders by giving them share. Thus, it is possible to raise large amount of capital. A joint stock company is an association of persons registered under Companies Act for carrying on some business it is called an artificial person as it is created by law with a distinctive name, a common seal. So these are the features of company guys. Distinctive name of the company, common stamp is there and perpetual succession of members. It can sue and be sued in its own name. The most widely quoted definition of a company called corporation in USA is given is the one given by Chief Justice Marshall. According to him, a corporation is an artificial being invisible because you cannot see because it is an intangible thing you can only feel it it's invisible intangible and existing only in contemplation of law so guys being the mere creature of law it possesses only those properties which uh, the charter of its creation confers upon it either expressly or an incidental to its very existence. So this is the definition. We, we are given this Indian 
companies act definition that i'll be considering to make you understand so guys indian companies act 1956 defines joint stock company as a company limited by shares having a permanent paid up or nominal share capital of fixed amount divided into shares also of fixed amount held and transferable as stock and formed on the principles of having its members only the holders of those shares or stock and no other person so guys this is the definition which is self contained and very exhaustive so through which we can understand some of the features of the company uh, through these definitions which were given so guys these are the main features i hope you are understanding the things i suppose are you enjoying the class okay so guys uh, main features that we need to understand based on the above definitions we can list out the features of the company form of organization as follows the first one is uh, is in corporation in corporation means you need to create through the law a company is an incorporated association it comes into existence only after registration under the companies act then guys it is an artificial person a company is regarded as an artificial person why it is so as it is created by law and can be effected only by law it has no body no soul no conscience it is in a position to exist like any other person it can own property conduct a lawful business enter into contracts with others buy sell and hold property all under its own name and its own seal then guys it has separate legal entity so this is also one of the important feature separate legal entity a company although the owner of the company are the shareholders but still shareholders are not the business man means they are shareholder and shareholders are having very limited liability up to whatever they have paid into the firm so separate legal entity means everything comes under the name of the company a company has a distinct entity separate from its members 
a shareholder of a company can enter into contract with the company and can i sue the company and be sued by it you know uh, that in the case of partnership every partner is an agent of the firm and also that of the other partners so uh, these uh, now uh, we have another that is common seal company uses perpetual succession means the company is continuation means even when the like in the death of the sole proprietorship the the business dissolves but here the company will go on forever then separation of ownership and management both are different the number of members that you need to understand in case of public limited company the minimum number of number is 7 and, and there is no maximum limit this is the public limited company in case of private limited company minimum number of is 2 and maximum is 50 then limited liability is there the liability of the member of a company is normally limited by guarantee or by shares members liability is limited to the amount of shares held members are not personally liable for the debts of the company so personal property of the members are not liable to be attached for the payment of the company's debt so now if you have transferability of shares means they are free shareholders are free to sell their transfers their shares to another person so it is very clearly mentioned over here to make you understand this limited liability so that i just want to go through just to make you understand for example the face value of the share of company is rupees 10 which the member has already paid at the time of winding up of the company the member cannot be asked to pay any money but if the member had paid only seven he can at the most be asked to pay the balance rupees three because the face value of the share is 10 so face value rupees 10 minus money paid that is seven and no more then transferability of share is there rigidity of object is there so guys these are the features statutory regulations over there so rigidity of object how is it applicable the scope of the business of a company is limited the type of business in which the company would participate is mentioned in the object clause of its memorandum of association so these are the important articles okay just go through these two points i'll discuss about this so this is also uh, be called as an activity for you two points just try to understand read them by your own i'll discuss with you
so guys have you gone through these two uh, different points rigidity of objects and another one is statutory regulations have you got it any confusion anyone can i speak about both of the two what does this point number 10 say anyone you must participate in the class because the class should be an interactive class this is not just a one way communication only in this case you'll understand you'll get something out of this class yes guys okay we can move further should i explain these two point or should we move further should i proceed one say explain and another says that you can move further whom should i follow anyway so guys rigidity means foundation the scope of the business of a company is limited the type of business in which the company would participate is mentioned in the object clause so guys while you are into a company you have so many restrictions means you have to go by the object means the work which you have mentioned in your memorandum of association and article of association you cannot uh, go beyond it the company cannot take up any new business without changing its object clause to change the object clause the company has to comply with the provisions of the company act now the statutory regulations because while you are registering yourself as a form of company or corporate you need to follow so many regulations so the company is governed by the companies act and it has to follow various provisions of the act it has to submit a number of returns to a government accounts of the company must be audited by a chartered accountant thus the company form of organization has to comply with numerous and varied statutory requirements so having studied the features of joint stock company you can easily make out that the shareholders are the real owners of the company their liability is limited they can also transfer their shares to others 
since the shareholders are very large in number the company cannot be managed by all they elect a board of directors to manage the company the destiny of the company is guided and directed by the directors so guys these directors employ some people to carry on the day to day business of the captain now uh, these are the things that you need to understand under uh, it is not simply a company under company you have different forms of companies so therefore guys you need to understand the classification of companies you need to understand the classification of companies so uh, guys we can classify companies on the basis of mode of incorporation extent of liability so the spelling is mistaken over here liability l i a category of shareholders and jurisdiction of functioning so uh, even a figure is also given but before this we can start mm. the first is mode of incorporation so in the mode of incorporation we can classify companies into three category one is statutory company a company established by a special act of the parliament or state legislature is called a statutory company So guys uh, such companies are established in special cases when it is necessary to regulate the working of the company for some specific purposes for example uh, of such uh, corporations are reserve bank of india so rbi is the central bank of india life insurance corporation of india air india corporation food corporation of india these are mostly public sector enterprises so therefore it is called statutory company special act that comes into being because of the special act Hmm. This based on mode of incorporation, we have statutory company, registered company, chartered company, and another one is based on the type of liability. We have unlimited liability company. We have company limited by guarantee. We have company limited by shares. Then, guys, we have uh, this based on. category of shareholders we have private limited company we have public limited company government company then based on jurisdiction of functioning we have national company and multinational company so the scope of multinational company is uh, going very popular nowadays so after statutory company we have registered company a company which is incorporated through registration with the registrar of the companies under the company act 1956 is called a registered company 
this is also called as incorporate company we have chartered company so guys uh, that you need to understand a company which is incorporated under a special royal charter granted by the monarch is called a chartered company then guys based on the liability we have unlimited com liability company so a company in which the liability of the member is unlimited is called unlimited liability at the time of winding of the company shareholders have to pay if necessary from their personal assets to clear the company's debt company limited by guarantee guys in the case of some companies members give guarantee for the debts of the company up to a certain limit in addition to the amount of shares held by them the additional amount guaranteed by the members is generally a laid down in the memorandum association such companies are not formed for the purpose of profit they are formed to promote art culture religion trade sports etc clubs charitable organizations trade associations etc come under this category now guys we have this company limited by shares in this case the liability of the members is limited to the amount of the shares held by them a shareholder can be called upon to pay only the unpaid amount of the shares held by him and nothing more most of the companies come under this category then we have on the basis of ownership we have three different category private liability company public liability company and government company so guys if we just go through the private liability company a private liability company means a company which by its article restricts the right to transfer the shares limits the number of its members to 50 and prohibits any invitation to the public to subscribe for any shares or debentures of the company and guys if we go by the public limited by company limited company we have a public com limited company is one which is not a private limited company a company having the following characteristics should be called a public limited company the right of shareholders to transfer the shares is not restricted the minimum number of shareholders is 7 but there is no limit to the maximum number of members it can invite public to subscribe for its shares and debentures the minimum number of guys uh, the members in this case of pub, private comp, limited company is two and can be formed more easily as compared to the public company then guys we have government company as the name suggest so if uh, any of the company has more than 50% shares that will become the government company then on the basis of jurisdiction of functioning we can classify the company into two category 
the first one is national company as the name suggest when the operations of the company are confined within the boundaries of a country in which it is registered such a company is called a national company whereas in the multinational company when the operations of the company are extended beyond the boundaries of the country in which it is registered such a company is called a multinational company it is also called transnational company now guys uh, every type uh, after discussing about the features and the types of company so it is very high time to understand its merits and limitations so guys uh, the company form of organization has been popular and successful in almost all the countries this form is suitable where uh, large sources are required and the production has to be carried out on a large scale the number of joint stock companies has shown a phenomenal increase in the 20th century let us now discuss the merit and limitations of the company form of organization the first one and foremost that is large capital since company form organizations are allowed to have a large number of shares it is possible to raise capital in large amounts whenever new capital is required it can issue shares and debentures guys for this reason only the capital form of organization is best suited then limited liability again it is also one of the important merit the liability of the shareholders unless and otherwise stated is limited to the face value of the shares held by them or guarantee given by them their private property is not attachable to recover the dues of the company thus this form of organization is a great attraction to persons who are not willing to take risk as it is as is inheritance of the sole proprietor and partnership so these were the limitations of proprietorship and partnership firm then stability of existence economies of scale scope of expansion public confidence is there transferability of share is there professional management tax benefits are there if you are into a partnership uh, company in a joint stock company then risk is also diffused now after important advantages we have some limitations as well guys the limitations difficulty in in formation because a uh, mm -hmm. lot of formalities are there to be fulfilled while you are into a corporation or company uh, promotion of a company is not as simple as proprietorships and partnerships lack of secrecy because everything is over there we have to make it public delay in decision making neglect of minority interest concentration of economic power lack of personal interest more government restrictions fraudulent management now we have some 
activity to do i think it is clear to all the number of members in public limited company minimum and maximum what is it anyone i think sir the first is unlimited hmm correct good and second one is the number of members in a private limited company minimum anyone limited numbers were mentioned guys i think you are not getting the things these were the features minimum number in limited company we have minimum as well as maximum i'll have to go back private limited company restrict to the right of transfer share limit the number of its member to 50 and in public minimum number of member is 7 but there is no limit that you need to understand got my point yes yes, yes sir hmm so minimum is unlimited mm okay okay in true and false in case of companies shareholders cannot transfer their shares to others false it is false correct good then guys uh, this is the cooperative form of organization that will be discussed in the next class i think it is enough for today hope you have enjoyed the class okay bye bye thank you thanks a lot thank you sir have a nice time